one simple question this morning. Why are you here? Say it louder. To get the Word of God. Okay, I got one answer. There's more than one of you here. To sing, to be inspired, to be inspired. I'm hoping you're not expecting me to inspire you. (laughs) Why are you here? Or another question. How did you get here? In a car? How many of you drove? How many of you walked? Nobody walked? Okay. Jog, rode a bike. How many of you were dragged here by your parents? <laughs> we have honest kids. I love it. Yes. Right. We, we, we got in a vehicle of some sort under our own accord or forcibly by an older person and showed up here this morning for worship. And we're here, right? And we read this lesson that we got a verse from last week, right? I am the bread of life. Whoever eats of this bread will never be hungry and never be thirsty. I taught um, this past week at um, Camp Chrysalis in Texas where we used to go to camp um, for their family camp. And it happened to be the I am statement. And when we got to this one, I asked the people in the Bible study, how many of you are still hungry and still thirsty? None of us were, of course, because they fed us every hour. But... um, (laughs) We still get hungry. We still get thirsty. But Jesus said if we eat of this bread that we will never hunger and we will never thirst again. So why is it that we're hungry and thirsty? Or is it a different kind of hungry and thirsty rather than a physical hungry and thirsty? But then our lesson today goes on to talk how the Jews then started to complain about him. That he said he is the bread that came down from heaven. Now, unless you have a different version than I do, up to this point, Jesus never said that He was the bread that came down from heaven. He hadn't said it yet. The Jews actually foreshadowed that. Jesus then later, after they said it, said it, that He's the bread that came down from heaven. There's so many things that we could hit upon in this passage this morning, but I want to look at one simple little verse out of this. Which goes back to my question, why are you here? Jesus says in this verse that no one can come to me unless they are drawn to me by God. So how does one get drawn to God? What are some images we can look at? Well, there's fishing, right? And not the fishing that most of you do here. So you use a pole, right, when you fish? Those of you that fish, you use a pole, Right? In Jesus' day, fishing was done by a net. Now, does the fish, when it's caught in the net, have a choice whether or not it's going to come out of the water? No, it doesn't. A a fish has a choice of whether or not it wants to bite that worm or whatever that bait is on the end of that hook. It has a choice. And it can choose to bite that hook or not to bite that hook. But a fish that's caught in the net has no choice in the matter. It's drawn up out of the water. Another image that we could look at is if you've ever, how many of you ever had those uh, bug zapper light things where the bug would fly into it? And <laughs> right? That's not really a good image, though. Number one, because the bug is the one that's doing all the action. The light doesn't draw the bug to it. Right? The light does nothing. The bug makes all the choices in this and flies to its death. So that's not a good image. What about... Farmers pulling whatever it is behind their tractor. Now that disc is not going to move unless that tractor is on it and pulling it, right? Have you ever seen a disc move without, have you ever seen, Aura, seen a disc move without a tractor pulling it? Maybe behind a truck if someone's moving it down the road, maybe. But not, they don't move by themselves. What about the tractor beam? Of course, they don't have those yet, but in one of my favorite movies, there are tractor beams, right? In the, very, in the first Star Wars, Star Wars number four, not number one, but number four, for those of you that are keeping track. 
the Millennium Falcon is caught by the Death Star tractor beam and pulled into it, right? It can't, it can't turn around and go the other way. Even with engines at full power, it can't escape the, the force of this beam. It's pulled to this place that it doesn't want to go. Or what about a Peterbilt pulling a trailer? Now, you could say a Mack truck, um, but Peterbilt is more biblical, I think, than Mack trucks. Um, <laughs> We could maybe go to say that white trucks, there are white trucks, white, we could probably work that one in because white is the color of Jesus, right? It's all dazzling and beautiful. But Peterbilt, a Peterbilt pulling a trailer down the road, right? That trailer's not going to move unless that tractor is pulling it. We are drawn into God. And how is it that we're drawn into God? Jesus actually tells us in our lesson this morning. He says, you cannot come to me unless you are drawn by God. And the prophets say that that is through learning, right? It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Jesus quotes Isaiah here. He says, and they will all be taught by God, and he teaches them, and they are drawn to Jesus because of that. And then Jesus after that adds, and everyone who has heard from and learned from my Father comes to me. Everyone who has heard from and learned from my Father comes to me. The other thing that we need to learn about this is every time it talks about a disciple in the New Testament, (coughs) the word disciple comes from the Greek word where we get math. Unfortunately, for those of you that don't like math. Um, But it's the word that means to learn. A disciple is one who learns and seeks wisdom. So all of us are taught by God and become disciples and become learners and are drawn to come back again and again and again to learn more about God and to learn more about ourselves. And without the power of God, we would be like the disciples in John chapter 6, verse 60, where it says, This word is difficult. Who can possibly accept it or who can possibly hear it? So it's a miracle that we are here this morning to learn about God. Right? How many of you could think of at least one other thing that you could be doing right now? And it's okay to raise your hand. I won't, I won't. Of course, my daughter was the first to shoot up high in the air. Right? There is probably each of us could think of, if we thought about it, a million things that we could be doing right now rather than mean sitting here. But we are here. You see, the question we shouldn't be asking is why are all of those people who aren't here not here? Because who can control their actions? Can you? No. Whose actions can you control? Mine. And maybe my children. Probably not, though. So the question shouldn't be why are people not here, but why do we keep believing and why do we keep coming? I have a friend once who told me about a person he knew who was a Muslim who became Christian, and he talked about his conversion from being a Muslim to being a Christian. And he said the one major thing that attracted him to Christianity was that it was so absurd. A God who is born and then dies. Salvation that begins by declaring that you can do nothing to save yourself. It either had to be true or the people proclaiming proclaiming it and believing it were crazy. Right? Why does anyone really believe this stuff? It's a miracle that we actually believe. Even Luther himself said that it's not our own doing. The third article, those of you who are confirmed long, long ago, third article of the Apostles' Creed, Luther's explanation. Does anybody remember it? I'll tell it to you anyhow, even if you don't remember it, even if you do remember it. Luther said in the explanation of the third article of the Apostles' Creed that I cannot by my own power or strength come to believe in God except through the power of the Holy Spirit. I can't believe in God unless God himself helps me and gives me the power and strength to believe in him. We are drawn to God. Like a trailer is pulled behind a tractor. Like a disc is pulled behind a tractor. Like a fish who is caught in a net is drawn up out of the water into the boat or onto the shore to what? Die. 
right? That fish dies. But that fish dies in order to give someone else life. Either the person that eats that fish or the fisherman that caught it and sells it, getting a living wage. That fish comes up out of the water to a death that brings about life for something else. Isn't that why we're here? To come to a place to die in order that we may be life for somebody else. You were brought here this morning, even if you drove your own car, you were brought here this morning by God. Pushing away all of the other things that creeped into your head about everything else that had to get done and everything else that you could use this time for to do, knowing that this is the place that God wanted you to be, to hear about Him and to learn about Him, to grow in discipleship, to grow as a family, to grow in in nurture and in life, and to learn more about what's happening to you in this place. We are here in worship on Sunday morning because God has brought us to this place. God brought us here to this place of worship, to this place where we can be taught to hear Him speak to us and to learn what it means to be children of God. And could we go even further to say that God has drawn us into this place, as I've already said, so that we can die, so that we might provide life for others, just as the fish caught in that net are drawn up out of the water and into the boat or onto the shore, and to die, to give life to someone else. So how did we get here this morning? We were all drawn here by God. We were all brought to this place to learn who we are, to learn who God is, and to learn how to live better together as His people. Pulled by a Peterbilt, which those of us who are free and independent spirits have a problem with, right? Someone else driving the ship is not a good thing. I want to be in control. Right? It's hard for those of us who claim to be in control of our lives. But if you've ever seen Ice Road Truckers, have you seen it? If you've ever seen Ice Road Truckers and you've seen spots where the trailer wanted to be in the, in the lead, it's not a pretty thing at all. It's not a good thing for the tractor or the trailer, and it 99.9999999% of the time leads to a crash when the trailer tries to be the lead. It's not a good thing. So even if you want to be in charge, take confidence in the fact that God is leading you down the road of life. He is your tractor. He is pulling you down the road and setting a path before you and helping you to see the places that He needs you to be and to do the things that He's called you to do. So continue to listen and to learn from Him and allow Him to draw you where you need to go. And if you claim that God is your co-pilot, then please switch seats and let Him be the one that is leading you to the places that He has in store for you, for the life that you can only possibly imagine.